All right, so we just took a close look at Neutron 2. Let's get into Ozone 8. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is that Master Assistant because it's the biggest, newest feature inside of the suite and it's incredible. I was gonna say awesome, but it's incredible. I don't know if they're the same, but whatever. It's that. Then after we check that out, we're gonna get into some of the other new and improved features. There's a lot, lot going on, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so here's Ozone 8. And the first thing you'll notice is that the GUI got an update, and it actually somehow looks more modern than Ozone 7. So the first new feature that I wanna to touch on is the Master Assistant. You can check it out right here. What this does is essentially analyzes any audio you're feeding into it, so like a full pre-master, and decides the best master chain to apply to the signal to get the best results. And the thing that's really great about this is that you can go in after it's given you the sort of custom-made preset and adjust anything you want to adjust. So it's not like a mastering service online that does it for you and then you have no options. This does it for you and then you have all the options you could possibly want. So let's go ahead and try it out. The first thing you're going to want to do is just go ahead and click the button. Then you're going to get what are you going for? A streaming target or a CD target? And this is going to essentially adjust the limiter ceiling and the limiter threshold. So streaming, you only have that one option. You hit next and you're going to go for it. CD, you get the intensity options for low, medium, and high. Since I'm making this video for YouTube, I'm just going to leave it on streaming because that makes sense. Then you're going to go ahead and check out this little message down here. And it says, for best results, play the loudest portion of your track. And I already have the loudest portion of my track on loop, so we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and play the music and click next and you should be warned at some point the music's going to get a bunch louder so if when the music starts it's a little bit quiet just relax don't turn up anything because the music's going to get louder in a second once ozone 8 applies the limiter to the track so let's go ahead and check it out Okay, so it says here's a suggestion to help get you started. And what it did was analyze the audio, set EQ to adjust the spectral balance, set dynamic control, so the compressor for the low end, set the maximizer threshold to hit that target, again, streaming target, analyzing frequencies of artifact causing spikes. That happens when you use a maximizer on an audio signal. The Any clipping or clicking and stuff like that gets amplified by the maximizer as well. So Ozone scans the signal to find where those artifacts are and then uses a dynamic EQ to reduce those artifacts which is awesome right so we're just gonna go ahead and click accept and go ahead and click the gain matching module which makes the unprocessed audio the same volume as the processed audio and then we can bypass it to hear how it sounds <laughs> I think it sounds crisper, cleaner, and punchier, and that's perfect. And again, these are just starting points for me to get in and really dial in my master using the modules. Since we're on the maximizer module right now, I just wanna point out a couple of new things. First, the stereo independence section. Now, in Ozone 7, there was just one slider called Stereo Unlink. And what it does essentially is moves the left and the right channel to, to create space. And now we have two sliders. We have the transient slider and the sustain slider. And we also have a link button. So if we keep them linked, we're essentially getting that one unlink module that we had in Ozone 7, but now we can actually unlink them and adjust things independently, which is is awesome. Another great thing is the IRC or Intelligent Release Control LL which stands for low latency and this is going to be great for using while you're working on your track inside of your DAW and then you might flip it on one of these other algorithms when you're exporting. 
And one final thing I want to touch on inside of the maximizer is the learn control. So when the learn control is activated, Ozone 8 is going to listen to the music that's incoming and try to hit a target LUFS. And I'm not sure you're aware, but it did make big news earlier this year. Spotify actually changed its target LUFS to negative 14. And that's the same on Tidal and on YouTube. So in general, that's a good target to have. And the fact that I can just type that in by double clicking negative 14 and then let my music play and hit the learn button in Ozone Zone 8 is going to take care of the threshold on my limiter to get me to that point. Let's go ahead and check it out. So now we can be confident that our output is going to be exactly where it needs to be for the best performance for streaming services like YouTube, Spotify, and Tidal. Okay, so let's jump over to the equalizer module now. And there have been a couple of updates that are really cool that I want to draw your attention to. The main one being the matching feature down here. What I can do now is play a professionally mixed track capture the EQ curve and then apply it to my track. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn off these frequency bands because I don't need them, right? So pretty much reset here. Then I'm gonna jump back in to this view mode here, make sure we're on matching, and I'm gonna play the target curve and I'm gonna let it play for a little bit so we can get the average of the EQ curve. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this blue line is that pre-master that was professionally mixed from someone else, a professional engineer. And this is the EQ curve that I've got. And I really like the way it sounds. It sounds vintage, it sounds warm, and that's what I want to apply to my track. So what I want to do is go ahead and play my track now and capture its curve. So there we go. They're pretty similar, but you'll notice over here, there's a little bit too much in the high end. Here it dips down a little bit too much in the higher mid range. And there's a little bit of difference here in the low end. What I can do now is all I have to do is hit this button and look what's happened. An EQ curve has been applied to the track, which is gonna get a closer result for my track to that target curve. And now that it's done that work, we have a smoothing option to make it a little bit less rigid or we can actually amplify how rigid it is so as you can see here we're getting really crazy and this is it would be way too much but it's just good to know like if this is too high we can pull it down right here fantastic if we want to jump in and actually turn on the bands we can get in and start making adjustments even further so that matching feature is a great tool it's really easy to use and it does a fantastic job actually matching eqs now ozone a has an incredible amount of updates and upgrades and we're not gonna be able to get to them all in this video tutorial but one thing i do want to show you is the new spectral shaper module so this is a new module that helps focus your mix anywhere you want it to so let's go ahead and just narrow this down pull down the threshold push up the tone and what I'm gonna do is move this back and forth and hopefully you can hear how it focuses your attention on that band Is that not incredible? So you can imagine when you get in and really start using that as it should be instead of just cranking the parameters to understand what's happening, you can get a really nice spectral shaper tool inside of Ozone and it does a phenomenal job focusing attention where you want it focused. It could be on a vocal, it could be on a lead, it could be on the hi-hat. It doesn't matter. Using this tool is going to get you where you want to go quicker and better than before. So Ozone 8 has really focused on setting up things to get you close to where you want to be automatically using its artificial intelligence algorithms. And another place that that's happened is inside the dynamic EQ module. There's now an auto scale feature which automatically adjusts the attack and release time for whatever frequency you have. So if I turn this off, for example, I can adjust the attack and release however I think it sounds best. However, using Ozone's new auto scale feature, I can click it, play the audio, and it will figure things out for me.
And I think that's a really good feature because one of the biggest issues people have with compression is that attack and release time. Adjusting the threshold, you get some pretty big differing results, so you can hear that a little bit better, but really dialing in attack and release can be a little bit difficult and having that built-in auto scale feature is the way to go. So that's just a few of the new and improved modules and updates inside of Ozone 8. I hardly scratched the surface on what's going on in here, but I wanted to share with you some of the highlights in my opinion. Highly suggest checking it out. The links are in the description of this video. So anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.